PvP in Escape from Tarkov is really difficult to master. As I've said before, a good fight is really a culmination of a bunch of small decisions that come together to win that fight. I've done a ton of content on this channel breaking down fights where I've died, showing how we can learn from our mistakes, but I think it's equally as beneficial to pick apart the cool fights that I win. Breaking down a successful fight can really highlight those small decisions so that you can practice them and hopefully start having really cool fights like this. So let's go ahead and dive right in. If you like making money in Tarkov, then I know you like earning money in real life. So you definitely want to stay tuned to find out how you can have a chance to win some cash with Upside. Upside is an app that gets you cash back on daily essentials like gas, grocery, and dining. What's nice is that this is all about earning cash back on things that you are already going to be spending money on. Look, I have two kids and just to stay afloat, we are constantly at the grocery store or driving around and needing gas. And Upside helps me get cash back on almost all of those purchases. And it's pretty significant with up to 25% cash back per gallon or up to 22% cash back at some restaurants. There are over 100,000 places where you can claim an offer in the Upside app. I was genuinely surprised at how many gas stations and restaurants were in my area and were on Upside. And it couldn't be more simple to use. Just download the free Upside app, claim an offer in your area, pay at that location with a linked card, and boom, you've earned some cash back and you can cash that out anytime you want. Also, we are doing a special limited time giveaway where viewers that sign up and redeem an offer will be automatically entered to win a $1,000 daily giveaway for the next 30 days. All you have to do is download the app, claim an offer, and redeem it by making a purchase at that location, and then you are automatically entered. And once again, that is a $1,000 giveaway every day for the next 30 days. So click the link in the description and start saving money on your everyday purchases with Upside. And for a chance to win that $1,000 prize, thank you so much to Upside for sponsoring this video. So I definitely don't claim to be a PVP god in Escape from Tarkov, but I take it really seriously to try and learn and get better and spend a lot of my time and energy on this kind of stuff. And every once in a while, something comes together and we get a really cool fight like this. So the way this will work is I'll just play the fight so we can kind of see it in its entirety from beginning to end, and then we'll go back and start breaking down each decision along the way. So let's take a look at the fight. MP5 feels so good. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Uh oh. How do we end up in this situation all the time? So that ended up being a really fun fight, a really fun three man. The MP5 SD is one of my favorite guns in the game right now, but a lot of decisions went into making that happen. Uh, fights in Escape from Tarkov, there's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of things that are just things you always want to kind of keep in mind, but then a lot, especially with extended fights against squads, is really learning how to react really quickly to what's going on. A good fight is always going to be a mixture of three things, mechanical skill, game sense, but in Tarkov especially, map knowledge. And on Shoreline, it might not look like it, but I used map knowledge quite a bit there to kind of win this fight. So we'll just go right back from the beginning and kind of start at, at the top. Uh, so knowing that there's a hole in the floor right here, it's not that crazy of a thing. The resort audio, obviously very inconsistent, but I know that on the third floor, you can't run along here and I hear people. So they've got to be below me because I'm on the third floor. 
I take a really tight peek here. I'm trying not to make a ton of noise. Uh, it's a squad, so you can make, you can afford to make a little bit of noise because it kind of gets drowned out with their noise, but I'm not trying to like run and just drop down this hole. Take the opportunity to take a look and I get really lucky here with a really quick pick off of this first guy. I know there's more, you know, as you saw in the video, I'm not 100% sure yet that this is a three man, but we kind of just try and send a barrage of shots down towards this guy. I'm trying to once again, get a quick uh, head glitch here, but I see him run away and I run out of ammo. Now, this is kind of the first thing I did is instead of reloading up top or relocating down through one of the stairs, because I see this guy is running away, I actually take the opportunity to drop down and use this as hard cover. I know that there's this big thing here and I don't know if this is hard or soft cover. I don't know if you can actually wall bang this, but nobody ever really tries because of how wide it is. And it's like plywood and then a bookshelf here. So I'm actually not 100% sure but I take the opportunity while he's backing up to drop down, even though I haven't finished up that reload yet, because I know this is between us and I want to keep the pressure on this guy uh, because I know that I've heard him. And now we get a few things. I hear him coughing and I shoot out that light. So that is just my favorite thing about Shoreline right now is that you can shoot out those lights. I don't like having that disadvantage of if he's got a flashlight on and these big construction lights are shooting at me, I'm in a bad spot there. So we take out the light. I hear this guy coughing, so I know I've done damage to him. And it doesn't seem like he's in either one of the rooms. It sounds like he's still just directly in front of me there. I do a quick peek because I'm actually not sure off the top of my head, map knowledge, which of these doors is open. So I check this one and I see it's closed. I know that the one behind it now is open. So I take the opportunity to just quick push into this room. And this is kind of the next key decision in this fight right here. I pull the grenade out, but instead of peeking out to throw it down the hallway, that is what he's expecting me to do since he heard me pull the grenade. And it's like the really common thing to do. Instead, what I know I can do with these shoreline rooms is just throw them against the wall and get a good bounce. Uh, this is something where using your utility, using grenades, you don't always have to get the grenade maybe exactly where you want it to go. A lot of times just throwing a grenade or getting a grenade near somebody forces them into action and then you can use that action. So right here, I have no intention of actually peeking and trying to get this down the hallway. I'm basically just throwing this to get him to move and also maybe hoping that I get a good bounce and it kills him. I also know that I can get it over this bookshelf, which is kind of the big thing in between us here. So I toss the grenade and then right here is your moment to peek because he's not going to want to just eat that grenade. He's going to try to get away from it. I peek. I see that he hasn't gotten into any room and this is basically just GG's for him. He's hurt. He didn't have a lot of options. That grenade forces him to make a decision. And then boom, we take the quick peek there and kind of pick off the two man. So there was a lot that went on there really quickly. At this point, I kind of just move away. I think the fight is over and then I hear a grenade. So I know that there's a third person. I want to move back. I want to kind of get back into a uh, better position than being all the way down this hall. So I basically just make my mission to get across into this room, the same room that I was in and try to gain information down the hallway. So I just run across. I get lucky and actually see him kind of peek it. So now I know about how far down the hallway he is. And I just move right into this. I try to take a quick peek on it. And then I hear another grenade. So I didn't actually know when I was crossing here that he was throwing a second grenade. I see him for a minute. And now you can kind of see him, you know, cocking that arm back to throw it. But I saw him and I was just attempting to take a really quick, tight right angle on him. I'm assuming he was moving out to either push me or to get to cover. I hear the other grenade. I have to kind of back off of it. Once again, this is exactly how you can use grenades. I had the angle there. I wasn't sure where he was. That means I'm in a powerful position because if it peaks, I can kill him. That grenade forces me off. Once again, a few really quick reactive decisions here. As I'm running back, my plan was basically just to take that angle again. He threw a grenade. I'm going to try and peek it really quick to gain information. I see his laser here, so I know he's hard scoping this corner. So instead of taking a quick peek, I use that same cover that we talked about before. I just run right across. The likelihood of him hitting that headshot uh, is very, very low. And now I can kind of get out of that bad position where in these shoreline hallways, I don't like to be forced into those rooms. Yes, a lot of the balconies that you can jump off, jump off of, 
but those flanks often like completely reset the fight and completely reset the momentum of the fight. So I don't like making those balcony jumps if I don't have to. So I just jet right across over. And then once again, using the audio, I bait out a few of his shots. And then I hear him, I hear him move into the room. So that allows me to kind of take this left here. I'm ADSing. I'm trying to get back into this room, but I want to make sure that I've got eyes on in case he repeaks it again. Uh oh. And then I hear somebody behind me. We'll listen to that audio again. Right as I'm trying to get into that room, I uh -oh. hear somebody behind me. At this point, once again, a little bit of that map knowledge comes in. That barbed wire that's been sitting between me and all of these guys the whole time, I know that that kind of insulates me here. If somebody is running across Skybridge or if somebody came from admin and they're pushing up, this guy now becomes the more uh, important threat because that barbed wire kind of insulates me. That guy, if he wants to push me, he has to sprint, jump over that barbed wire, which you always hit, meaning I can hear his jump and I can hear the barbed wire, and I can either turn around and take a flick on him or go right down these stairs that are to my right. So this guy, there's nothing, you know, keeping me away from him. If he starts to just do the slow creep crab that makes no audio, I'm toast. So I kind of take this opportunity to listen and see if this guy's going to push. I'm very aware of this other guy behind me. He could be looting his buddy's body. He could be running, but I'm kind of listening for audio both ways. So since I don't hear this guy doing anything and he's not getting very aggressive, I just decide to get really aggressive on this third guy and try to clean up this fight really quickly. I get a nade. I toss it over. Once again, I know I'm going to be able to hear him if he pushes me. I try to time the nade explosion up with me jumping over. I don't get it. When I'm making this jump, I'm peeking over, seeing if he's peeking. My grenade blew up kind of where I wanted it to go. And this is where he almost gets me. Now that I've jumped across here, I'm still trying to advance because I kind of, if anything, want to use this cover to cover my back if this other guy pushes behind me. So I want to get around this. I'm trying to do it slowly. And this is kind of where I almost lose this fight. But once again, reacting, instead of trying to square up with this guy, I know that I have these rooms open. I can get right in here. And this was probably the riskiest decision that I make. Uh, all of the other decisions were pretty calculated. I didn't expose myself to too much risk killing the other two guys or in the fight with this guy up until now. He hits me, my thorax is low, but this is just sometimes, I, I can't tell you that this is a decision you should always make, but uh, wide swinging angles, the element of surprise, uh, off angers, counterintuitive things, oftentimes can net you the kill. Once again, this very well could have been a lessons from beyond the grave where I swing this guy and I died, but this is exactly what I'm hoping for. Now that I'm across this barbed wire, and this guy's put shots on me, what I'm thinking is he's then gonna get aggressive. This whole fight, we've been having that barbed wire between us. Nobody really wants to jump across because you're in a really bad spot. He gets shots on me. Uh, it's really easy to kind of push people who are in these rooms if they're playing passively. So he wants to scoot up and I exactly what I want happens, I catch him in a sprint. I peek wide. I have some cover here, but I'm very exposed. I kind of push him. Nine mil definitely does me dirty here. But I push him behind this cover and he actually doesn't hit me a single time uh, after his shots. They're all eaten up by the box. So once again, risky play, but sometimes the element of surprise, just trying to be really aggressive. Once again, I know that there are other people here. So that kind of informs this decision is I don't want to play too passively and give somebody that's potentially running across Skybridge the opportunity to push up. So knowing that I was about to get pinched, I do think this was the right call. But this is one of those things where it's not always the right call to wide swing somebody in the resort. This guy could have been posted up for me and killed me really easily. But making these quick snap judgments based on who else is around, sometimes you just have to get a little risky. So ultimately, that was kind of the breakdown of this cool shoreline 1v3 fight. Hopefully this kind of showed all those things. Game sense, map knowledge, mechanical skill, uh, how to be reactive. Like, like I said, you can apply this to any fight with any gun on any map. How do I learn the map? How do I know, you know where cover is and what insulates me and what doesn't? Who do I put pressure on? How do I make somebody do something I want them to do? I think the really strong thing about especially the first half of this fight is I was never really at risk. Until it was that third guy, I was insulated from danger. I was pushing people into doing what I wanted to do and learning when to be aggressive. You get a really early pick, push, try and add the pressure on. Somebody's hurt or you know somebody's behind you. Don't let them push you. So there were a lot of reactive decisions in this fight. 
and I hope it kind of like broke it down into the smaller bite-sized decisions so that you can kind of practice these things and hopefully get into really cool fights like this yourself. If you like videos like this, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I love talking about this stuff. I love doing the Beyond the Graves, the teaching tactics. If you want to see more like this, definitely drop a comment. Let me know. If you like the video, think about dropping a like or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch about six days a week. That link is going to be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.